Help support Name Explain by liking this video, leaving a comment, and subscribing to the channel. Homonyms are a feature of language in which two words are spelt and pronounced the same, but have completely different meanings. Take a word like pen, which can either be the name for an enclosure of animals or a writing instrument, or even something like bright, which can mean someone is very clever or that somewhere is full of light. The ones I just mentioned were examples in which both words in the homonym pairing were of the same word class. Both types of pens are nouns, and both types of bright are adjectives. Though this doesn't always have to be the case with homonyms. Take match as an example. To match is a verb meaning to pair things together, and a match is a noun meaning a little stick used for making fire. It's noun to verb homonyms that we are interested in today. The other thing I'll note about homonyms is that by and large they're not etymologically tied together. Well, in the English language anyway. English comes from so many other languages that it's no surprise that similar sounds appeared multiple times, with those similar sounds meaning different things in their native tongues. But once they all fuse into English, these similar sounds went on to mean different things, all in the same language. I'm not really sure if that made sense or not, but take a word like bark, which is the name of the covering of a tree, and the sound a dog makes. The tree bark came into English from Old Norse or the dog bark came into English via Proto-Germanic. Though Proto-Germanic and Old Norse are somewhat tied together, it's not the best example I guess, but hopefully you understand what I mean. And while I just mentioned that bark as in a dog's bark is a noun, it can be a verb too, as in the dog will bark at you. This is something in morphology called conversion slash zero derivation, where we take a word, change it in no way, but use it in a different word class. Another great example is pirate. It's a noun as in the people with hooks and parrots who live on the sea stealing things, and because they steal things, to pirate became a verb meaning to steal something, specifically with movies and other forms of media. Now that I think about it, pirate became an adjective too, as these illegal movies would be described as pirate DVDs. Anyway, I'm falling down the weird rabbit hole of language getting way too off topic. What I'm trying to say is things like homonyms and conversion are really quite popular, and can be seen all across language. I don't really think there are any words or types of words that are completely unaffected by these language features. We've mentioned them with boring, dull, everyday nouns, but proper nouns like the first names we all have can be affected too by the weird world of homonyms and conversion. As you will have seen from the title of today's video, I want to talk about first names that are also verbs. Why? Honestly, I'm not too sure. I just find them pretty funny for some weird reason, and I want to share them with you guys. Also, they're so wonderfully hidden in plain sight. Like some of you may be thinking, Patrick, what are you talking about? There aren't any names that are also verbs, and that's why you are wrong. I found a variety of lists online compiling first names that are also verbs, and oh boy, there are way more than I ever thought there would have been. Some, however, I found a bit questionable, and others were homophones, not homonyms. I mean, they sound the same, but are spelt differently, like the name Doug and the verb of Doug. However, in between these, there are some really fun examples, and painfully obvious ones too. Like when I read that some of these names were also verbs, I was like, of course they are, how had I not noticed? And hopefully you'll feel like that too. Like my very own name is also a verb, well, kind of, and I never really noticed, but more on that later. Honestly, I just love when I hear a fact that should have been super obvious, but I never noticed it before, and the feeling of stupidity that overtakes you when you hear it. I hope to give you guys that feeling when I make a silly video like this one. And and honestly, I don't really know what the point of this video is either. Usually my videos have a goal in mind, like answering a question laid out in the title, or to explain a particular subject in more detail. This time I just want to share something I found really funny for some reason. I guess in fancier terms, the point of this video is to highlight this silly quirk in language, because language is a lot of things. Cool, clever, interesting, weird, but it's at its best when it's being silly, and I really enjoy talking about silly things. There's enough people being all serious about trivial matters on YouTube. However, I do also want to know if there's any connection between these first names and their identical verbs. Has any conversion taken place, or are they just homonyms? We will be going in alphabetical order of the ones that are interesting to me, and that means we're starting with the name Barb. As a name, Barb is often a shortening of Barbara, that can be a name unto itself, but as a verb, Barb means to add barbs, which are sharp ends to something, like we see with barbed wire. The name Barb comes from the Greek barbalos, meaning things like foreign and strange, while the verb of Barb comes from the other noun of Barb, which derives from the old French Barb, meaning beard, as I guess beards can get rather Barb-like at times, so there is no link between these names, but it's interesting how the name Barb means stranger, and how barbs are often used to protect others from strangers. Interestingly enough, the Greek word of Barbalos that gave us Barbara gave us the word Barbarian too, as they were seen as strange and foreign. 
Bill is a shortening of William, and funnily enough, another shortening of William will be mentioned in this video too. Though today, Bill can be a standalone name. The verb of Bill, as in to bill someone, means to charge someone money due to goods or a service you gave them. The name Bill comes from William, and William means resolute protector, and came into the English language via French. Bill, as in the verb power, comes from the Latin bulla, meaning decree slash sealed document. So once again, no actual connection between the two. Why does William mean resolute protector? Well, we'll talk about that more when we reach the other William nickname, and how William was shortened to Bill could be its own video. Another strange shortening, like how William became Bill, is Robert becoming Bob. Though with the name Bob, we have another name that is also a verb, with the verb Bob meaning to move up and down in short motions, like how rubber duck bobs in the bath. Once again, there's not really a connection between these two. The name Bob comes from Robert, and Robert means bright fame, while the verb of Bob comes from old French and meant mock. The name Carol is also a verb too. To carol is to sing happily, most noticeably at Christmas time. And the name Carol is more often today seen as a feminine name. However, it started life as a male name, coming from the Latin Carolus, meaning things like man slash husband. A female form of this name emerged, Caroline, and then that was shortened to just Carol too. The verb of Carol comes from Old French, meaning to sing with joy. The name Chuck is seen as a name unto itself, but it's also a diminutive of Charles. Interestingly, Charles actually comes from the same root as Carol, as we just mentioned, from the Latin Carolos, meaning man slash husband. The verb of Chuck means to throw, but not a neat kind of throw. Chuck gives off connotations of a messy, not thought out, somewhat aggressive throw, like you'd chuck a letter that made you angry in the bin, or you'd chuck someone out your house. It's quite a violent word, so by no surprise it came from a variation of choc, meaning to hit someone under the chin. Chuck and choc both ultimately came from the French chocolate meaning to shock slash strike. The given name of Dawn is a homonym with the dawn that we see in the morning. However, they are both nouns. Dawn as a verb means to begin to understand something. Usually all of a sudden, when we have a light bulb moment, we'll often say it dawned on me. Using dawn as a verb like this relates to how the sun slowly rises in the dawn of the day. In this sense, dawn is also a verb too, meaning to become day. Dawn became a name simply because people like the noun so much of the morning dawn. And all this comes from the older English dajan, meaning to become day. So if once the name of dawn and the verb of dawn with two different meanings are actually pretty connected. The verb of drew is the past tense variation of draw, as in draw a picture or draw the curtains. Draw comes from the old Norse dragger, meaning to drag slash pull, as a draw in action does contain pulling and dragging. As a name, however, drew came into being as a shortening of Andrew. Andrew slash just drew as a name came from Greek, and is believed to mean strong and manly. So once again, no connection between the name and the verb. Like with Dawn, Grace became a popular first name simply because people like the sound of the verb so much. Grace as a verb means to thank slash show favour. This came from the old French grace meaning to pardon slash thank. So once again, like with Dawn, we have another name and verb homonym combo that are linked together. While Grant is more often seen as a surname, it can be a first name too. As a first name, it's thought to possibly come from the French slash Latin glant, meaning tall slash large. However, some speculate it comes from people who like the sound of the verb. The verb of Grant means to allow or permit, and the verb comes from a conversion of the noun grant, which is a sum of money given to someone for a specific purpose. This kind of grant comes from the old French grant, meaning to promise slash assurance. Jimmy is a really interesting one for me. As a name, it comes from Jim, which is the diminutive of James, but as a verb, it means to force something open. And from what I can gather, to use Jimmy as a verb is somewhat colloquial. James, which Jimmy comes from, is a seriously old name. It's believed to mean supplant slash one who follows, as the name belonged to two of the disciples of Jesus. As for the verb, well, apparently a Jimmy is a name for a short crowbar, and it would have been these crowbars people would use to try and Jimmy things open. Mark is a name believed to root back to the Roman god of war, Mars, which is pretty awesome. So why does the verb of Mark simply mean to add an impression onto something? Like how teachers mark test papers, and how dirty fingers can mark a photo. Well, while the name is of Latin origin, the verb seems to be of Old Dutch, coming from their word Merk, meaning to brand. I think to a lot of the world, Nick might just be a name. However, in the UK, Nick is a colloquial verb for stealing something, though maybe they use it in Australia and New Zealand 
happened to. I have no idea what's going on down there. Though as a verb it also means make a small cut. It's thought that the verb meaning to steal and the verb meaning to cut a small hole are connected, but we aren't sure how. It's thought to ultimately derive from the French niche, meaning a small hole in a wall. The name of Nick comes from a shortening of Nicholas, and this name comes from Greek, meaning victory people, relating to their goddess of victory, Nike. As I mentioned in the start of this video, even my own name is actually a verb too. Well, a shortening of my name is. That being pat. Pat as a verb means to tap lightly, like how you pat a dog. It's thought the verb is somewhat onomatopoeic, coming from the sound made when you pat something. The name Patrick, however, dates back all the way to the patricians of Roman, which we have talked about more in a video all about the name Patrick. The name of Rose undoubtedly comes from the flower roses, which makes all the sense in the world as many flower names have become first names. Names. However, as well as being a human and flower name, rose is a verb too, being the past tense of rise, meaning to get up. The name comes from the flower, which is ultimately thought to be of Iranian origins. But what about the verb? Well, as it's the past version of rise, it's better to look into that verb instead. It's thought to have come from the Old English lizan, meaning to get out of bed, so no connection here. And finally, we have Will, which I mentioned is the other shortening of William. I mentioned with Bill that William means resolute protection. Hector. But why is this? Well, the will part of William comes from the verb will, which means to desire slash determination slash resolute. So this means that the name of will and the verb of will are actually neatly related. And on that high note, we'll probably wrap things up here. There are so many more names I wanted to share with you, but this weird video was getting way too long. Like I said, I have no idea what the point of this video actually was. I just find these names really fun and interesting. And hopefully you are thinking more about names that could be verbs too. Let me know some that I forgot about down in the comments. And this video is only really about English names. I'd love to hear if names from around the world match up with verbs from their respective languages. Thank you to all my patrons who support Name Explain on a monthly basis. Name Explain depends on small monthly donations from fans like you to help keep the channel running. Just the small amount of $2 a month helps in a huge way, grants you patron exclusive Name Explain extras, and it gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you. Hello all and thank you so much for reaching the end of the video. Check out another video and subscribe to stay in the loop on all things Name Explain. You can follow myself on Twitter at NameExplainYT. Follow me there and tweet the name Rob at me to know you came from this message. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.